My dear brothers and sisters, a woman called up God one day and started bitterly crying and saying, Lord, I don't understand you at all. I don't know why I'm not able to understand you. And immediately God replied and said, Good madam, listen, I also don't understand you. I am unable to understand you. That makes us even. And then he hang up. Yes, my dear friends, sometimes we say this. I don't understand my God. I don't understand his ways. I don't understand why he does this to me. But we all still follow him. And this is what Jesus wants to tell you. You are in a world where you will fall into temptation and but still will be following me and I appreciate that. That is the greatest encouragement that he gives us. In spite of all our temptation, in spite of our falling into sin and coming back to him and saying, Lord, I want to be your great follower. He accepts us as we are because he has chosen you. And therefore, you and I are very obliged to come to him always. We're looking at today's first reading and gospel. Is it possible for fasting 40 days and 40 nights and live to tell the tale of what happened to Jesus? Is it possible 40 days and 40 nights to fast? Some of the reports from the world an average person can go through fasting for 30 days without eating. Gandhi and his Irish prisoners in the British jail in Belfast fasted for even more than 40 days. One of the great Mitch Skander, who was an advocate for all the homeless, fasted for 51 days. Unlike Jesus, these men took liquids. And we know when people go for fast in our country as well, they are there in that place, Jantar Mantar, fasting till death. And there are still many people who are fasting for the past more than 10 years, 15 years there for their rights. Fasting is part of our life. But look at this part, that Jesus fasted. And who is the eyewitness for Jesus' fasting? Jesus himself. For him to write and tell us, this is how I fasted. God did not want Adam and Eve to be tempted. God did not want Adam and Eve to experience evil. But he also gave them the freedom, the free will, and the ability to choose good or evil. And then they ate their fruit and they fall into sin. Now, when they ate their fruit, it was only an attempt to push God out of their life. So we see, if you come to my house or you come to my room, if I push you out, how do you feel? If I neck you out, Forcefully, how do you feel? So also, every time when I fall into temptation and I'm pushing out God from my life, remember always this, every time I fall into temptation, I commit sin, I am pushing God out of my life. This is also the part which Jesus Christ wants to tell us how he overcomes the three temptations. And we look at this, the endurance part of Jesus. How he overcomes temptation through the gospel. Jesus was hungry, that's what the gospel says. Then the devil takes an advantage. The devil comes to tempt him to pray to his father. So that something may happen. But he doesn't tell the devil, doesn't tell Jesus, now you pray to your father, he will give you food. No. He wants to tell Jesus, change these rock into bread and satisfy your hunger. Turn the rocks into bread. 
Use the power of your father that you have been given for yourself. The power that is given to Jesus by his heavenly father, he wants Jesus to use it for himself. Now this is that selfish thought of the Satan. Remember always this. The devil always come to tempt you on this part of being selfish. So also he says to Jesus, turn these rocks into bread. And that is why Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone. We are all tempted to that selfishness. We are tempted in such a way that we want to be always self-centered. The second aspect that we see the temptation to endure. Throw yourself from the parapet of the temple. Your father will catch you when you fall and you will not hurt yourself. What does this mean? This is to show the superiority of the father. That the father is superior than the son. A temptation to demand that the father is going to be in action. We want the father to be in action. We do this when we demand something from God. I want God to do this. Therefore the Satan also is very cunning. He wants to see God the father in action. Therefore he said, jump from here. God the father will come and catch you. When we pray also, my dear friends, we always say, God, if you don't do this, then I think you are not a God. God hears all our prayers, remember this. And he knows when to say no, when to say yes. One of those great old country singer, God Books, sings this beautiful song. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayer. Some of God's gifts are unanswered prayers. This is a beautiful song which says, Sometimes I thank God for the unanswered prayers. Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. Therefore, you and I, that which the temptation to force God into action is seen, we believe that certain prayers will always not produce the desired results, but it is always heard by God. God is God and we are not God or gods. Therefore, when we pray, God hears it. That is enough. For God is aware of it. The third temptation that we see in today's gospel reading, where the devil takes him to a high place, shows all the beautiful kingdoms and tells Jesus, now you see the kingdom, now you see everything. Just look at that, worship me and I'll give it to you. My dear friends, this is one important aspect. We all have accumulated possessions and power as though these gifts from God will make our lives very happy. We accumulate. We see that I want this, I want this, I want this. There is never ending wants in our lives. But look at Jesus. These kingdoms he seen and he said to that Satan, listen, you must worship the Lord your God, not worship all these material things. And he reminds each and every one of us, the way of the world is the way of the devil. Think about it. Look at the dark places in your life, how the material things have taken control of us. And we are not able to look at the divine things that God wants to present to us. That is the reason why, my dear friends, when the devil left Jesus, what happened? The angels appeared and looked after him. Every time, remember, when you overcome temptation and you avoid the very occasion of sin, 
the angels come and stand around you and protect you and these are the powers of heaven that which is bestowed to each and every one who on the very occasion of temptation avoids the occasion of sin and receives god's protection today you and i need that protection we are all afraid of the corona virus in our lives when it is going to come to india we are all looking out when it is going to attack me i do not know therefore when you come to receive the body and blood of christ today be sealed with the blood of christ for the old testament we see how the blood of the lamb was put on the lentils and whenever the wherever this blood of the lamb was put on the lentil they were all protected we have the new covenant here jesus is very body and blood receive it and be protected so that when the corona virus comes near you it will not enter into you it will say jesus is here i cannot go into this bus amen let us all stand for the creed let